was working super hard on a makeup tutorial show. She was teaching smoky eyes to folks out there who really wanted to know when some freaky deaky science stuff only understood by nerds. Zapped into old radio shows that kind you might never have heard. Now she should probably be trying to get out But Madison, she's having fun Living an old time radio life Our explanation is done Madison is on the air The Green Hornet <laughs> He hunts the biggest of all game Public enemies that try to destroy our America with his faithful valet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with racketeers and saboteurs, risking his life that criminals and enemy spies will feel the weight of the law by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, The Corpse That Wasn't There. The Green Hornet strikes again! Good afternoon. Oh, hey! Uh, is this your office? <laughs> My office? <laughs> Last I checked, your name is on the door, as well as on your mail, which I deliver to you now. Mail? Who's sending me mail? I couldn't say. And seeing as how it's a federal offense to open other people's mail, I hand them to you completely sealed. I can't get the post office to forward my mail across town. I'm gonna guess sending it 70 years to the past is a little outside of their delivery range. Wait, hang on. My name's not on any of these. They all say Mr. Britt Reed. Britt Reed? Why do I know that name? Presumably because it's your name, Mr. Reed. I'm sorry, did you just call me Mr. Reed? <gasps> or is he standing right behind me? Were you out late last night? Perhaps you need to rest. Uh, you got a mirror around here? Um, I have a compact at my desk. You mind grabbing it for me? Of course. <sighs> oh God, did I somehow quantum leap this time? Am I in the actual body of this Brit Reed dude? <gasps> oh, I still got boobs. They're there. That's them. <laughs> Unless, is he trans? Brit Reed? Maybe Brittany? Here you are, Mr. Reed. Thanks. Hang on. I look like me in the mirror. Uh, were you expecting to look like someone else, Mr. Reed? Okay, girl, what do you see when you look at me? You mean, describe you? Yeah, come on, hit me. Um, okay, you're tall. How tall? Over six feet. Okay, even in my tallest stilettos, I'm not over six feet. Mr. Reed, I... Wait, what's your name? My name? Why, I was your father's assistant long before you ever took over the newspaper for him. Don't need a life story, just a name. Miss Case. Ooh, that really does sound familiar. Why can't I place it? Well, this is new. Alrighty then, just call me Britt Reed. Uh, is there anything else you need, Mr. Reed? Hey, wait a sec. This letter you gave me has a different name on it. Keegler? Oh, yes, that letter. Someone dropped it on the street. I've been trying to reach him by phone. Do you mind if I try now? Uh, knock yourself out. I'll look at the other letters addressed to me. Mr. Britt Reed. Thank you. Hello, switchboard. Yes, this is Lenore. Um, Helen, will you try that number again? It's... Yes, that's right. So you found the letter on the street? Yeah. A man bumped into me, and when I went to pick up my pocketbook, I saw he dropped the letter. But he'd already disappeared. It's sealed, but unmailed. Yes, Helen. Oh, well, okay, thanks. Maybe he works in a factory or someplace. No, no, I won't bother. Goodbye. Hmm, still no answer. Why not just mail it? 
I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I don't have much experience mailing anything. I pay all my bills online, send birthday greetings on social media. Aside from returns to Amazon, I don't think I've ever mailed anything in my entire life. I guess that is the easiest thing. Oh, wait a minute. Look at the address. Uh, yeah? It's right on your way home, Mr. Reed. Yes! I recognize that address now. Right on my way home. To wherever it is that I live. Would you drop it off, please? Sure. Absolutely. My car would be... in the garage? Well, I assume your valet, Cato, would be driving you. Cato! Ah! This is the Green Hornet! I beg your pardon? Oh, yes, duh! Britt Reed, Cato, Miss Case. Oh, that was gonna bug me all day. Bug? Hornet? <laughs> I'll let you get back to work now, Mr. Reed. Okay, later, Miss Case. So I am literally in the body of the Green Hornet. I mean, given the choice, I would have gone for, like, Wonder Woman, but... <gasps> oh no, wait a minute. Oh, whew. All girl parts below the waist. I was a little concerned there for a second. Although, that would be interesting. So, Kato. Hey. <laughs> I appreciate the ride. Uh, not really sure what to say here, because I kind of totally forgot until now how completely not PC your character is. PC? That broken English thing. I'm so sorry that's how they wrote Asian characters back then. Oh, it gets better. First, I was the Japanese valet until Pearl Harbor. Couldn't have a Japanese character after that. So then I became the faithful valet until they made me the Filipino valet and sometimes even the Korean valet. Wow, you're surprisingly self-aware. I still think I got a better deal than Tonto. You know, the Green Hornet is technically in the same universe as the Lone Ranger. I did not know that. Yeah, Britt Reed is the grandnephew of John Reed, the Lone Ranger. You mean, I'm the grandnephew of John Reed, because I'm Britt Reed. Last I checked, Britt Reed wasn't a blonde in a short skirt. <gasps> Kato, you can see me as Madison! You'll find everyone around here sees what they want to see. That broken English thing, they just assume that's how I talk, so that's how it comes out to them. Whatever. I'm saving my money to open a kung fu school in Oakland. Well, here's the house you want to stop at to drop off that letter. Oh, okay. Um, I'll be right back. Man, this is so weird. I've only ever tried to pass myself off as someone else to get into Hollywood red carpet events. And how was I supposed to know when I said I was Ava Philippi that Reese Witherspoon was actually hosting the event? We're all blondes. Why does it matter? Nobody's home. Wait, I, I can see someone through the window. <gasps> OMG! Kato! Kato! What is it? OMG, OMG, OMG! And they say I'm the one who speaks in broken English. Come on, you gotta see this! There! There, look! Did you try the door? I really wasn't planning on going in there when I saw that. It's unlocked. Come on, and be careful. Is... is he... Oh, it's obvious. All we needed was one look. Where's the phone? You mean the landline? I don't know. Didn't you old-timey people used to stick them on the walls or something? There it is, on the table. That's odd. Huh, I thought so. Madison, look. This telephone wire's been cut. And you need the wires for the phone to work! Ha-ha! I figured out a few things about your ancient technology over this last year. That, and to never expect to find a vegan option at any restaurant anywhere, ever. What is everyone's obsession with cooking everything in animal fat? I'll get to the nearest phone and call the police. You stay here, Madison. Stay here? With the dead body? Would you know where to find a public phone? Public phone? If it's anything like a public pool, it's going to be full of kid pee, so... No thank you! I'll be right back. Okay, just me and the dead body of some gross bloated old dude. I've seen so many dead bodies in these old-timey radio shows. I wonder if I'm ever going to get desensitized to it. <gasps> what was that? 
get him! What? Oh, this superhero stuff hurts. Now get busy. Madison. Oh. You're all right. Ow, 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 ow! You gotta get up. The police are in the other room, and they can't see Britt Reed lying on the floor. I feel like the time I joined a mosh pit, it did not go well. The fact that it was at a Michael Bublé concert should have been my first hint. You got a bump on the top of your head like an egg. Who was it? I don't know. I heard someone say, get him, and I looked to see what they were talking about. <gasps> I'm the him. Oh, this is going to take some getting used to. Where's the letter? The letter? The letter you came to deliver? Oh, uh... Huh, not here. That must have been what they wanted. Say, Mr. Reed? Mr. Reed? He means you. Oh, right. Yeah? Oh, maybe, maybe a little lower. Yeah? Hey, what kind of a joke is this? Joke? Look, I have no idea how I got here, how I got in this body. Joke? I Murder, no joke, officer. Uh, sure, that's what I mean. What's the idea, calling up the police and having all this? What is going on? What are you people doing in my house? Who are you? Who am I? I live here. My name is Ernest Kegler. Just who are you? I'm Mad- Britt Reed. Mad Mad Britt Reed. <laughs> Perhaps explanation why dead man in living room. They really think you talk like that? What's that? A dead man in my living room? Yes, murdered. Do we know for sure he was murdered? It could have been natural causes. One night when I was working at Applebee's, a customer dropped dead from a brain aneurysm. He fell face first in his flaming Hot Cheetos cheese bites. The manager told us not to tell anyone until we got the coroner's report back, just in case he died from a tainted Cheeto. Now hold on, wait a minute. Mr. Reed, if you're playing a joke, you're carrying it too far. I don't joke about Cheetos. Take a look in that room. There's no murdered man. There's nobody at all. What? Kato! Come here a sec! Yeah? I can't trust my eyes. Do you not see a body too? The sergeant's right. There's no body. Not now, anyway. This feels like the Matrix, and I've taken both pills. Lowry's back, Mr. Reed. Lowry, Lowry. You told me to ask him to find out information about- Lowry's a reporter! I got it now. Send him in. Go on in, Mr. Lowry. Thanks, Casey. I drew a blank, boss. You didn't find out anything? Well, the cops decided that you and Cato must have walked in on a practical joke. Maybe a fraternity initiation. Oh, dude, I've had my fill of those. Learned to hide my bras during rush week. I, um... Hung right on their shoulders while they checked up on this Ernest Kegler guy. The one who owned the house. He's pure as snow, boss. They even checked his fingerprints. They got them on file because he works in a war plant. War plant? Like, making bombs and stuff? Sure. Top secret work. Gotta have clearance for that. I had to get clearance for the last place I rented. You really feel a breach of trust when your own parents run a background check on you. What's our next move, boss? Well... Did you find out if that Kegler guy was the one who bumped into Miss Case on the street? Uh, the one who dropped the letter? Could have been him. I was with her when it happened, but I didn't get a close look at the time. I asked Kegler about a letter, and he said yes, he lost one, but it wasn't important. This doesn't make sense. And what kind of Animal House-level practical joke cuts phone wires and knocks people unconscious? Cops haven't figured that one out yet. All they can guess is whoever you saw was playing dead. Well, give that dude the Oscar. I'll keep looking into it, boss. Will I be able to reach you at home? Oh, uh, I guess it is kind of late. Yeah, I I'm gonna head home. I'll call you if I hear anything new. Okay. Leaving now, Mr. Reed? Yeah, uh, later. Holy mackerel! You said it, Lowry. Something's off about Mr. Reed. What do you think he meant by hide his bras? Hey, Kato, I'm home. Dude, do you always sit with your feet up in the living room smoking cigars? I'm a sidekick, Madison. I'm loyal like a dog to a master, but if I don't get my time to relax, I might just bite my master. Get my meaning? Hey, no, I get it. It's like when your boss rewards you with a pizza party. Like, thanks, pizza is the one thing I can afford on this lousy salary. Pepperoni, 
is not appreciation. I have been thinking about this Kegler thing all day. Something strange is going on. I'm sure of it. Especially with that missing letter. I had that Lowry reporter guy look into it, and the cops totes don't believe us. But the amount of aspirin I've taken for this bump on my head says otherwise. You should use the role of the Green Hornet to look into this. I should? <gasps> oh, that'd be awesome. I'll get his mask and the gas gun. Gas gun? The non-lethal weapon the Green Hornet uses. Oh, kind of like how the Dukes of Hazard used a bow and arrow? Of course, that was only because they were on parole and couldn't own a gun. And seeing as how they were from Georgia, I bet those two could take down a deer with a bow and arrow. Easy. Boss Hog got lucky. Follow me. We'll take the Black Beauty. A few seconds later, stepping through a secret panel in the rear of a closet in his bedroom. What, no fireman's poles? You're thinking Batman. Aren't we all, though? Madison, Standish, and Cato went along a narrow passage built within the wall of the apartment house itself. Dude, don't you ever dust in here? I've walked through like 20 spider webs. This passage led to an adjoining building, which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, super-powered, black beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Streamlined? There's not even a cell phone jack. But you just need to press a button to start the car. And? <sighs> just press the button. <laughs> The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically, then dropped into place as the gleaming black beauty sped into darkness. Woo! Okay, this baby's got some pickup. Do you know where we're going? Didn't you plug it into the GPS? The what? Streamlined, he says. Slow down. We need to turn left up ahead. Kegler's house is down at the far end of the next block. We can leave the Black Beauty here in the alley. Look, there. Somebody's going into Kegler's front door. Hey, it's Lowry, the reporter guy. Come on, we'll get into the house quietly through the back. Wait, ha hang on. I've got some majorly restricted vision here with this mask. What is this thing made of? Plastic? Don't look down at your feet. Just try focusing straight ahead. It's like crime fighting through a Fisher-Price Viewmaster. No, there isn't anything special I wanted to see you about, Mr. Kegler. But I just can't help feeling that the boss did run into something. He's a level-headed guy. Well, normally. Yes, I understand. I read the Sentinel myself. A good newspaper. He just stopped off to do you a favor and return that letter. Letter? The one you dropped when you bumped into Miss Case, remember? Oh, yes, but it wasn't important. Please, why don't you forget the whole thing? <laughs> well, you know us reporters. Maybe there was somebody here, I, I don't know. Maybe it was a practical joke. Uh, but whatever it was, or wasn't, it's over and done with. Here, I'll, I'll show you to the door. Okay, okay, I'll be going. We haven't learned anything new. What was that crack about? Normally I'm level-headed? Kigler's coming back. Get behind those drapes. I think I'm doing a pretty good job being Britt Reed. When I pretended to be Ava Phillippe, I knocked over one of those chocolate fountains right onto Ryan Reynolds. He looked like a goose's glue. Hello? It's Kegler. A reporter was just here. I'm worried. All right, if you say so. Yes, I understand. All right, I'll destroy the letter at once. Uh, goodbye. Okay, Kegler, hand over that letter. What? Yeah! Damn it! I can't see anything with this stupid mask. Look out, Hornet. He has a gun. That's the Green Hornet. I know martial arts, if that helps with the awe factor. It really doesn't. Hey everybody! I hope you're enjoying the Green Hornet. Are you a fan of all things comics? Oh yeah? Then are you listening to The Last Comic Shop? Hey, welcome to The Last Comic Shop Podcast! A comic book podcast that actually talks about comics. Yep, each week we open the shop up and read and discuss a comic. Sometimes we pair that up with comic book movies or TV shows. Or not. Lots of times it's just comic books and sound effects. Oh, yes. Definitely lots of sound effects. So tune in on all the major podcasting platforms to the Last Comic Shop Podcast. Or check out our library of evergreen shows at www.lastcomicshoppodcast.com. <laughs> What are you 
doing here? Who is it, Bolton? Ah, Mr. Kegler. This is a breach of our agreement, would you say? I'm sorry, Mr. Mannheim, but there was that reporter snooping around. Which is why we told you to burn the letter. <laughs> it's a lucky thing that fellow we slugged had to letter. I lifted it right from his hand. But, uh, but I wasn't able to burn it. And somebody else knows about the letter. What? Who knows about it? I do. He's masked. The Green Hornet. I got him covered. Whoa, gun. We've got another gun. Kano! Use the gas gun. Oh, right. Dang it. I think I dropped it in the hall. I really deserve a raise. Another masked man. It's Kato. Watch out, Bolton. Good. <laughs> Keep him busy. I'll try to find the gas gun. <laughs> it's not in the hall. Try your pocket. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Thanks. Ha-ha. Leave that gun on the floor or I'll pull the trigger of my gas gun. Which is non-lethal, but still pretty intense. I'm fairly sure. Never used it before, actually. But I hear good things. What is this all about, Kegler? Is this a double cross? Wow, that is one stereotype German accent going on there. I'm guessing we're mid-World War II, so we hate the Germans right now? I told you, I'm Filipino. All right, Colonel Clink it is. We're gonna get you for this double cross, Kegler. But I- Chill out! Kegler's still on your side. He tried to shoot at us back at his place, but he sucks and totally missed. I myself was cleverly disguised as drapery at the time. How much letter worth to you, Bolton? Nothing. Why? And what happened to the dead dude? What is this dude? Button your lip, Mannheim. Let him talk. Who was dead man? You're off the beam. Oh, I think after years of gymnastics, I'm very much on the beam. Unless we're talking about the time I competed when I had the flu. Vomiting on the balance beam while performing a cartwheel will definitely knock some points off your score. Especially from the judges closest to the mat. Was dead man real Kigler and this one pick? Ooh, that's good. I hadn't thought of that. Little twist there. You're pretty smart, aren't you? Police maybe think so. Don't give me that. The Hornet wouldn't go to the police. Yeah, why not? The police think the Green Hornet is part of the criminal underworld. They don't think I'm a good guy? They'd arrest you on the spot. Oh, well, thanks for telling me. I didn't know you didn't know. Quick, Mannheim, get the gun! Don't you move. I have Kegler. He come with us. But, but... Stay here, Kegler, or you're gonna get it. He will talk with us. Tell us all about Dead Man. No, he stays here. Sorry, Bolton. You're just gonna have to figure out how you're supposed to live without him. That's my best Michael Bolton. That's all I got. I got the gun. Get him, Mannheim. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> ah, guess. I can't. Ha ha! 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 Uh-oh. What happened? She forgot to put her gas mask on before using the gas gun. That seems like common sense. You'd think, huh? Grab a leg, would you? Oh. Put her, uh, him down, Kegler. It's the strangest thing. Does a green hornet shave his legs? He, uh, runs faster that way? Whoa, where are we? Kegler's taking us to the garage out back. Oh, I'm still in the green hornet. I, I don't understand what's going on. And what happened to your accent, Kato? Oh. Why'd you do that? He was starting to figure things out, and it's better all around if he doesn't. So, what's with the garage then? If my hunch is correct, the garage has the answer to our disappearing corpse. Aw, oh, damn it. Look. What do you see? A trunk, a.k.a. dead body hiding place. Wait till after World War II when you guys will get the freezer chest. Bigger than a trunk, keeps the body preserved, and major bonus, no maggots. <sighs> I suppose I should open it up to verify? If you wouldn't mind. Dead body? Dead body. Hey, look at him, and look at the Kegler guy you just knocked out. 
They both resemble each other. Ooh, I got an idea. How decomposy is he? Not terrible. He's been dead maybe six hours. Okay, if you wouldn't mind grabbing him by yourself, because, ew, and then follow me. Explain to me exactly what your plan is. Ah, ah, ah! No time to explain. Scoot your boot, Kato. Come on, let's go. Great. Now she's starting to act like the real Green Hornet. Oh, what was that about a freezer chest? Manheim. Manheim. Wake up. Come on. Snap out of it. Oh, there's my gun. Oh, it's you. Is he gone? Yeah, him and Kegler both. I wish we'd taken care of that, um, you know, in the trunk in the garage. I'll tell you one thing we gotta do. Do you mean Kegler? Yeah, he's scared silly. He's already talked to the Hornet. He might talk to the police if the pressure gets strong enough. We gotta take care of him. Kill him, huh? Yeah, we gotta do it. Soon. That's the back door. The Hornet? Keep your gun out of sight. Don't worry. I don't take chances with that fella. What are you waiting for? Open the door. Look at the glass, Mannheim. It's a shadow. Looks like he's leaning right against... Ah! Bolton, it's the body from the tank in the garage propped up against the door. Well, who put it there? I did. Ha! You should have seen your faces. The Hornet. Got you to open the door, didn't it? Some trick. I did that one year to get into this really exclusive nightclub. It was kind of a weekend at Bernie's, but with a passed out toe for grace. Who is this man, Bolton? He dressed like Kigler. He looked like Kigler. He was real Kigler, wasn't he? Forget it. This doesn't concern you. It does so. The police think I'm crazy because I reported a dead body when there wasn't one. You reported the dead body? He mean Brit Lead reported, not Green Hornet. Oh crap, I forgot about the secret identity thing. I got a lot of people to keep track of today. Ha yes, we slug newspaper man unconscious and smuggle the body out. Zip it, Mannheim. What is the Hornet going to do, hmm? He is a known criminal. Okay, well then, criminal to criminal, why did you kill the dude? We don't gotta tell you nothing. Don't make me get my gas gun again. Damn it, now where did I leave it? You replaced Leo Kegler with Dinger? Why? Probably because Kegler worked in a war plant. How did you know that? Lowry told me. Were you ever planning on telling me? I don't know. It never came up. All right. So you figured out our game, Hornet. Now what? I want in on it. What? Yeah, a, a cut of uh, whatever. Uh, money. I want money. We're still in a pinch. We gotta get that letter and take care of the other Kegler. All right, the letter. We think our Kegler was getting yellow. We told him to burn the letter, but now we think he planned to go to the police. So a letter contained proof Kegler wasn't who he said he was. They're forged documents we used to get our Kegler into the war plant. You take us to this country! Hey, I'm just trying to make a buck. But I am loyal to my country. Yeah, 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 treason, whatever. Apparently by 2021, no one's even going to care if you commit treason. Perhaps we should... I got this, Kato. We stage a murder-suicide. Murder-suicide? What are you talking about, Hornet? Yes, Hornet, maybe we know... Chill, Kato. I've watched a ton of true crime shows. You name a serial killer, and I could tell you where they operated, their M.O., number of victims, how they were caught... W what's all that got to do with Kegler? Some of you criminals are so stupid. Do your research, okay? We make it look like the real Kegler was killed by the fake Kegler, then the fake Kegler killed himself, and the cops don't try to find the real killers. Us! Duh! Hmm. You are a true criminal mastermind, Hornet. Thanks. I've scared off a few boyfriends with this, but hey, don't cheat on me, and I won't have to use my knowledge of how to dispose of a body. So, what do we do next? And you take the two Keeglers to Keegler's house, and Kato and I will meet you there. All right, Hornet. You got a deal. Come on, Mannheim. You better have one heck of a plan. What do you mean? We're going to do a murder-suicide. The Green Hornet is going to murder someone? Oh, dang it. I got so swept up pretending to be a criminal, I forgot we were the good guys. Maybe we should just call the police. No, those guys will just hide the body again. <gasps> Ooh! I know. Okay, does the streamlined Black Beauty at least have a car phone? 
Of course. Of course, he says. Don't be bragging on your 1940s technology. I've worn your underwear. City room. Ed Lowry talking. Hello? Hello? I'd say your reception on this car phone sucks, but it's really no worse than myself. Is that you, boss? Yeah, hey, Lowry. Can you hear me? Are you in a car? Yeah, so? Funny. I only thought someone like the Green Hornet would have a car phone. Oh, crap. He says only the Green Hornet would have a car phone. <sighs> You're the Green Hornet for one day and managed to reveal his secret identity to half the city. Uh, never mind the phone. Just get over to Kegler's house again, okay? But I already tried talking to him. I'm the boss. Get your butt over there. I could get used to being in charge. I wonder if the Lone Ranger is hiring. Oh, Lowry, why did you bring me to this place? I don't like this one bit. I was too suspicious of that phone call, Casey. It sounded like Britt, but he has been acting rather strangely. I agree. You know, when I asked him a question, he told me to... Google it. No time for that now. Look, Casey. Three men going toward the front door. They're carrying another man. Eh, I'd say that guy's had one drink too many or... Holy mackerel! Wait here, Casey. Lowry, where are you going? I'll be right back. I'm going to look in a window. Then I'm going with you. They're inside now. That man they were carrying doesn't look drunk. Nope, he's dead. Lying on the living room floor. Look, Lowry. The hornet's there too. The Hornet? Now this is a story. I'll keep watching. You get to a phone and get the cops here as fast as you can. I don't understand why you brought the real Kegler back here. Murder-suicide. Duh. What? German dude, give me your gun. Here's a... Wipe your fingerprints off it first. You guys don't even have to deal with DNA testing yet, and you still can't pull off a murder. Jeez. Sorry, Hornet. Okay, where was I? Murder-suicide? Yeah, right, thanks. So, this is the gun used to kill that Kegler, and now we're going to use it to kill you, so it looks like you killed him and then yourself. Cool, right? No, no! Bolton, don't let him! Shut up, Kegler. That's the way we want it. That makes us safe. Get it? Then the Hornet gives us that letter, and we burn it. What about my working as a spy in the war plant? All of that effort to get me on the inside. We shall find another Patsy. Finding Americans willing to betray their country for money is not so hard, eh, Hornet? There's a fine line between nationalism and capitalism. Hey, what's that? Police cars, they're outside. Police? Hornet, hurry up! Hey, don't rush me. Staging a murder scene takes some finesse, okay? Do you want to go to the chair? Well, do you? No. Okay, then. All right, Hornet. We know you're in there. We really should try to hurry this up, Madison. Shoot him already. I will. But not with your gun. With mine. Damn it. Here. Thank you. Gas? I... I... Gas? Hornet, what gives? With gas, he'll just wake up. Yep, he'll wake up. In jail. With you. What? Bolton, we've been fooled. Get him. Get the Hornet. Too late! I can't breathe. Great job, Madison. Now let's get out of here before the police... Uh Well, that's just perfect. Break the door down. Well, I'll be. Are they all dead? No, just one of them. Lowry and I saw the whole thing from the window, Sergeant. And unless I'm nuts, I'll have a spy story that'll hit the headlines. That's fine, but what happened to the Green Hornet? Oh, what happened? Kato? Aw, was I gassed again? Yes. What are you doing? I'm packing. Where are we going? Not we, me. But I'm Britt Reed, and you're my faithful valet. Not anymore, I'm not. If you're going to be the Green Hornet from now on, I quit. What? Where are you gonna go? China. I hear there's good money to be made in kung fu movies. Kato! Mr. Britt! 
I think that's my exit cue. I don't know if I pulled it off as the Green Hornet or not, but anything's better than Seth Rogen. X-Tree, X-Tree, read all about it. Brit Reed, back to normal. Madison Standish, still at large. Did you just call me fat? Don't you run from me, you little doozy twerp. The Green Hornet was born in 1936 out of the Detroit radio station WXYZ, spearheaded by George Trendle, who'd brought the Lone Ranger to the airwaves. The series was meant to showcase corruption and politics and white-collar crime, which would be taken down by one man. When the show first began, the narrator said, The Green Hornet hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. Which angered J. Edgar Hoover because he thought they meant that his FBI agents weren't up to snuff. So the copy was forcibly changed, basically proving the Green Hornet couldn't fight all corruption. <clears throat> Trindle liked the B sound and chose the name The Hornet for his hero. The colors of blue and pink were considered until the team landed on green. The original release of the series ran until 1952 and has continued over the years in comics, television, and films. Hey everybody, it's Madison. Thank you so much for listening. Do you want some free swag? I'll send you a Madison on the Air logo sticker when you sign up for my free e-newsletter sneak peeks, my exclusive behind-the-scenes blog, and all sorts of not-found-anywhere-else Madison stuff. Sign up on my website, madisonontheair.com. Oh, and we are in the middle of a campaign to get Ryan Reynolds on my show. When you're on Twitter, be sure to tag at VanCityReynolds with hashtag RyanOnMadison to let him know you want him on my show. Thank you guys. You are amazing. Okay, Nancer dude, roll the credits. Madison on the Air was written and produced by Chrissy Talon Sage with music composition and audio engineering by Jeremy Sage. The role of Madison Standish was played by Chrissy Talon Sage. Cato was played by Steve Jun. Other actors in the cast were Sharon Grunewald as Miss Case, Andrew Chan as Ed Lowry, Tom O'Connor as Bolton, Kareem Confley as Mannheim, Jeremy Sage as Keegler, Rico DiGiorgio as the police sergeant, and Matthew Bird as the announcer. <laughs>